Anders Breivik is reported to have belonged to right-wing political groups. He's being described as a Christian fundamentalist. He is described as right-wing, a Christian fundamentalist, and having anti-Muslim views. He's described as a 32-year-old fundamentalist Christian. A suspected Christian fundamentalist is charged in the attacks, but police are now investigating the possibility he didn't act alone. According to some of the websites that he maintained, including a Facebook site, he had some pretty uh, Christian fundamentalist views. Well, they don't like Christians much at the CBC. God forbid you say a Muslim terrorist, you might get fired from the CBC, but Christians, it's open season. Look, let's let's jump ahead. Let's pretend for just one moment that Rob Anders' survey of his constituents came true and that we made the political decision to do something about the CBC. Let's stop talk, talking politics for just one minute and talk business. How would we actually go about privatizing the CBC if our government found the will to do so? Well, I don't know, but luckily there are people who do this sort of thing for a living, and one of them is my guest in studio right now, David Dunlop, senior managing partner, senior partner rather, over at Macmillan Law Firm, a mergers and acquisition specialist. David, this is the sort of thing you advise uh, big shots on all the time, yeah. right? <laughs> big shots, yeah. No, this is, this is something that we do on a daily basis and uh, look forward to uh, files like this of, uh, of significance and complexity. So let's say, I mean, let's put aside the politics just for a moment and pretend that the government said, let's sell the CBC. They've made that decision before with Petro Canada and Air Canada. Yes. Walk me through how they would go about it. How would they, first of all, try and figure out how much the thing is worth? I mean, it, it burns up $1.1 billion a year, but it still has a lot of assets, right? Yes, and I think, um, I mean, the $1.1 billion, I've heard that before, but I understand that would be on a global basis for the entire uh, enterprise. I think what you have to do to start out with is you have to look at the various enterprises within the CBC. I think there's an online presence, there's a radio presence, there's a uh, television presence obviously. There's also other assets. Uh, there's a film library of historical television shows. There are rights to carry certain things. There's rights to uh, uh, National Hockey League games on Saturday night, which we're all familiar with. So you have to look at each one of these, the real these assets. Like yeah, the real estate. Gorgeous offices. Absolutely. Yeah. They have, they have fantastic real estate on Front Street that uh, more than a few people might have an interest in for, yeah. uh, for, for one reason or another. Yeah. So I think you, you would start with an investment bank. You, you might have a, um, I don't know, RBC or Bank of Montreal, Capital Markets or Canaccord Genuity, something like that, who would sit down and look at the, uh, the financials associated with each particular business to the extent that they can be segmented and see which, which one of these buckets produces uh, good revenue and returns. So CBC Radio, for example, doesn't have revenue. So that might be a, a, a simple exercise, but it has talent. It has, a, has a, a, a listenership, and so there would be value associated with that. But that would be a non-traditional business, as most businesses would have some kind of revenue. Right. So the business folks would look at these and determine some values, you know, free cash flow, earnings, um, gross sales, that kind of thing, to yeah. determine some value. And, and you know, once they came up with a number, let, let's say the thing was worth, I'm just going to make up a number, $2 billion. We really don't know until someone went in uh, and did some serious uh, accounting. But let's say it was $2 billion. Bucks. Would What would happen once the government had some independent assessment of the value of the company? How would they then go about finding a buyer? I mean, that, that's a pretty big price tag for any one person or one company well it might be it depends on the uh, on the participant it could be a strategic buyer it could be another uh, you know television or media uh, facility it could be an investing uh, buyer it could be a financial buyer who has money and a, a private equity for example is the flavor of the month right now where a lot of projects are being done with uh, money and money needs to find a home and if the if the asset the underlying asset generates real revenue and real profits then it wouldn't be difficult finding a buyer I think the f this would be a very confidential uh, matter, though. I think people would, be, would not want this out in the public domain until a decision was made to actually sell it, that there was real value, and they would probably put together data, often in a form of an electronic data room, and they would get various interested parties. So your selling agent, like a BMO Capital Markets, would uh, uh, engender some interest in this particular business, and they'd see if they could sell it on block 
or if they split it up into various parts, depending on uh, what the financials look like. Now, let's say some real turnaround artists, like a guy who specializes in taking sick companies, would come in and say, I think I can unlock the value. I'm going to sell off some parts that don't work or don't have. Like, for example, the CBC has an office in Nairobi, Kenya. And I just laugh when I hear that. Like, right. who, what real company would spend a million or half a million bucks a year on that? But some other things are maybe really undervalued. So let's say that turnaround artist, I, let's call him Gordon. Gecko would would buy this thing for two million bucks. How do you think? Just I mean, you, rough guesses. What do you think the process would look like in the first year? Probably selling off some some crazy things like the outlet in Nairobi. But let's say he took it over, and if he really tried to turn the thing around, what might happen in that first year if Gordon Gecko bought the thing? Well, if if Gordon Gecko bought it or a restructuring professional bought it, uh, it would it would they would do the same thing that the investment bank would do in terms of valuing. They would take a look at it and make determinations as to why are some assets not producing value, and it may be because they have too many people. It may be because they don't have enough people. So you may add in some areas, in other areas you may reduce people. It may be uh, there could be unionized uh, situations. Let's talk about that. I mean, yep. I, I I showed I'm going to show some clips in the next segment of when I visited the CBC, and I found the attitude of the workers more like a government unionized bureaucrat than, let's say, the Pepe staff at WestJet. How could a new buyer try and change the corporate culture of the CBC to make them entrepreneurial and private sectory instead of that real malaise government feel? Like, how would someone try and do that? Well, I, you, you've given a great example. I think WestJet's a great example of a, of a company that has engendered all kinds of enthusiasm from their employees, right down to the uh, the flight attendants and you, when you're on the plane. They are as engaged as anyone. And that's what the public sees, quite frankly. So with the CBC, we see it online, we see it on the radio, we, we see it on television. I think there's a matter of saying, okay, you know what, if we do well, you're going to participate in the profits. I think that's the key. Well, no, I, I got a crazy idea. It, what would happen if a certain percentage of the company was set aside for employees to own? I mean, that's not a crazy idea at all. A lot no, of companies do that. Idea, uh, do you think you could transform the corporate culture by, could you turn a bureaucrat into an owner mentality? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Sure. yeah. yeah and you say not? that very why quickly. Not? Well, I, I mean, I think your, your comment about a, um, a participation of employees or of management or however it would work is a very common device yeah. used by all kinds of, uh, many projects that I've worked on where private equity concern sets aside an amount of money for senior management, lower management, and, and just general employees. And I think a profit sharing arrangement is a great way uh, to get people to participate in a different fashion because you're, you're going to be turning a page completely yeah. with a company that is a massive company, unbelievably financially sponsored by the CBC, and you're going to turn it now into something very different. Imagine it happens. Let's say the government had the will to do it. There was a valuation. You found a buyer who went in ruthlessly and said, I'm going to save this, and I'm going to make it a go. Fast forward five years, and I'm afraid this is a, my last question because we're out of time. Five years after a sale was done to someone who wanted to save the CBC, what might a privatized CBC look like that would be different from the CBC today? Well, I think it, it would probably have less assets, probably have less scope. I mean, the CBC operates under um, not just a, 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 a t traditional company format. It operates with the political uh, essence of the government behind it because it services all areas of Canada. I think that a, a, a changed CBC, a privatized CBC, would be quite different. It wouldn't have your office in Nairobi, or maybe it would. I don't know if that was a strategic part. But I think many of the assets and, and the liabilities associated with the operation would be quite different. They would probably have reduced scope. Probably a smaller CBC. Probably a smaller footprint. What, yep. uh, what do you think it would do more of? We know it would probably do less Nairobi, Kenya stories. What do you think it might do more of? Uh, you know, there may be more focus on things that are uh, less politically oriented, maybe things that are more uh, internationally focused, less on Canada specifically, because mm -hmm. when you're owned by the government of Canada, there has to be a particular Canadian orientation. Right. So it may, be, uh, it may be driven by the listenership or the reader, the, the, the viewership. So, you know, I, I think that's the, that's the money quote right there. It would, for the first time in its life, instead of turning its eyes towards what Ottawa wanted, would turn its eyes towards what its audience wanted. Wouldn't that be a change? Absolutely. And I, that's probably why WestJet, for example, has, yeah. has been, because the customer wants uh. to see the engagement of WestJet with its... Well, uh, I really appreciate its, uh, this, and I hope you'll come on again. My goal is to make this a reality, to set the CBC free and to unleash the human power, the ingenuity of its thousands of workers. David Dunlop, senior partner, 
over at McMillan. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, folks, after the break, a look at my journey into the belly of the beach. That's next on The Source. I actually went in there, you know. That's ahead on the right next after this break. I just want to save you.